Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. If I sound a little stuffy, I apologize. It's spring and nature is doing its best to try and kill me. But what the heck is happening here? Been reviewing guitars for a couple of years now and didn't manage to snag a Charvel for the channel until a couple of weeks ago. And I've already got another one. What can I say? I was impressed with Satchel's signature model. This one though, it's much less loud, but it's definitely still eye-catching. It's the kind of new, I've been trying to get this for a while, ProMod DK24 HSS. It's shell pink, and on the spec sheet for $9.99 new, it is absolutely loaded. But is it really as good in real life as it appears on paper? Let's take a closer look. And before we get into the review, I want to give a shout out to Benjamin Naboa and the rest of the patrons for making what I do possible. If you like what I do with the demos and reviews, you can support me directly as well, get bonus perks through the link below. That's it. I just really appreciate what the patrons do, so I like to set aside time in the video for it. And now let's get right into the review. So, not gonna lie, color is a big reason why I chose to review this guitar. What can I say? I'm a sucker for pastel colors, and apparently with the top two performing videos on my channel being of pink guitars, there's a bit of a theme here. That being said, while those two are much more vibrant and in your face, the Charvel takes a much more tasteful approach. The classic dinky shaped alder body is a very light pink in real life, akin to the shade that white clothes become when you accidentally throw in a red sock with your laundry load. So it looks great by itself, but then the contrast with the dark caramelized or caramelized for you British viewers one piece maple neck is just f I love it. It just looks so f good. In classic super strat fashion, the neck is bolted firmly onto the body and there's not too much of a neck pocket gap, which is nice to see. Then to keep the look consistent and simple, the fingerboard is also caramelized maple with perloid dots. Okay, so that's what initially caught my attention. It looks very good. But also, as I alluded to in the intro, Charvel has absolutely decked this guitar out in terms of features, hardware, and electronics. Charvel has included some of their die cast locking tuners and they feel just like good standard Fender tuners that lock. I mean, between those, the roller string trees, and the Graftech tusk nut, I haven't had to worry about tuning stability. The two-point trem is made by Godo, one of the most reputable hardware companies in the game. It is a high quality bridge. It goes for at least $75 if you were to buy it yourself, depending on which retailer you're looking at. So it is a premium part. More importantly though, it feels solid for any of the tremolo techniques and also palm muting. Now, I don't know what happened in QC before this guitar shipped out, or maybe it happened after shipping, 
but somehow none of the springs were installed properly out of the box. They were just loose in the cavity and it was immediately apparent as soon as I unboxed it. They were just rattling around in the guitar and the bridge was fully angled forward. Now it's not really too big of a deal because it was easy enough to unscrew the tension screws, or whatever they're called, pop the springs into place and then reset the screws to their original position, but I mean the springs are now in there pretty tight. I don't know how that would actually happen, like pop out, I've never seen it before. And now that they're properly installed, it doesn't feel like they're going anywhere and the bridge is very stable. We've also got Lumen Lays. It's really cool that more and more guitars around that thousand dollar price point are starting to come with glow in the dark side dots. It seems like such an obvious inclusion. Most people don't look to the fretboard inlays all that much to navigate while playing. That's why fingerboards with no inlays are so common, but the side markers are incredibly important. And so this just makes them easier to see in the dark. Plus, it looks sick. So Charvel is part of the Fender family of brands, and while this may share the same headstock shape as your traditional Strat, you may notice that there's something missing. Where is the hole for the truss rod? Well, with Charvel's, that's not how things work. Instead, just like with a lot of Jackson's, truss rod adjustment is done with this little spoke wheel at the end of the neck. That's really cool. Much easier access for quick, on-the-fly adjustments. One small touch that shouldn't be overlooked is that the strap buttons are actually massive compared to most other ones that I've seen. So while they're not locking, if you're playing with a strap, these buttons make it much less likely that your guitar will fall off compared to like a standard Fender. Oh, and the input jack too. The location is super cool. It's on the back and angled upwards so that you can loop it through your strap and it goes in at the right angle. That's a much appreciated forward thinking. So spec wise, very impressive, but sometimes that doesn't tell the full story. You can have a guitar that looks incredible on paper, but then be an absolute dog to play in the real world. But I'd actually argue that playability is this guitar's strongest suit. It is effortless to play. First, there's the fretwork. The last two Made in Mexico Fender guitars I've played, this and the Player Series Telecaster, the fretwork has been very, very impressive. Both times I've had to double check the spec sheet to make sure they weren't stainless steel because they have definitely looked and felt like it. They're very well polished, super shiny so they look great, and super smooth so they feel great too. Everything's level, no dead spots, and no hint of a single sharp edge. The Tele was sent to me directly from Fender for the review, so you might kind of expect that quality, but the Charvel is just out of Sam Ash's inventory, so this is one that any customer could have picked up, and it's equally as impressive. The satin neck has Charvel's speed profile, which feels very similar to ESP's Thin U, one of my favorite neck shapes of all time. Like most Charvels, the fingerboard has a compound radius of rounder 12 inches at the lower frets and a flatter 16 inches at the higher frets for the widdly widdlies, instead of binding, the edges are rolled. You know how like on a lot of new guitars, the fingerboard feels sharp until you've played it for a couple years, and then it feels more worn down, more played in, more comfortable? Basically, Charvel's done that for you from the factory. So with this guitar, it feels like picking up an old friend. If they were a guitar, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what that ad lib was. Moving on, the dinky body has both a forearm bevel and a tummy cut, which are always nice. And then this neck carve is one of the most comfortable I've ever come across. The roundness of the joint and the slight bevel, it's like the perfect shape for my hand. Accessing the upper frets feels so natural, and my left hand actually rests on the body. It's not just floating there like it usually does with other guitars that also have great upper fret access. The result is a guitar that's not only fun to play, but the Pro Mod DK24 actually establishes itself as one of the best playing guitars I've had on the channel to date. It is truly that good. I was worried about action and intonation with the bridge being so out of whack at the beginning, but once the springs were back in place, I mean, everything was fine. And if you're wondering, it doesn't actually come set up for standard, but for a half step down, because lower makes everything more aggressive or something. Okay, so with features like the roasted maple neck, rolled fingerboard, lumen lace, spoke wheel truss rod adjustment system, and the Godot bridge, for just technically under $1,000, you might think that Charvel may have had to skimp on the pickups. But no, they have not. The DK24 is loaded with Seymour Duncans, an SH10 custom full shred in the bridge, and two SSL6 custom flat strat single coils in the middle and neck positions. You can modify the tones through the one volume, one tone, five way blade switch control configuration. Here's what everything sounds like through the dual rec. <laughs>
yeah. So, this guitar sounds pretty good. The SH-10 is kind of an interesting beast. It's very, very bright, so it pairs well with the Mesa, which has a ton of low end. Then the SSL-6 is Duncan's overwhelmed single coil, the same as the SSL-5, the difference being that this one has flat pole pieces. The 5 pickup is probably most well known for being used by David Gilmour in the bridge position of his strats. So sound-wise, this guitar leans slightly more to the modern side, but in the hands of the right guitarist, it can be incredibly versatile. This volume knob in particular is worth pointing out. It's a 500k EVH Burns Low Friction pot, and when it says low friction, it means low friction. It's super quick, you barely have to touch it to adjust the volume. Now a couple times at the beginning, this meant that I was accidentally turning down my volume without meaning to, but once I adjusted, it was super cool to be able to effortlessly go from no volume to full volume and back again. What's also very cool is that Charvel is seen to make sure the neck pickup is the RWRP version. This means that it's reverse wound with reverse polarity. Doesn't make a difference in terms of sounds compared to the normal version, but it means when you use either of the two singles or the neck with the split bridge together, it cancels the hum out. Spec wise, it's hard to argue against the fact that this Charvel is good value for money. $9.99 US, you're getting the roasted, I mean caramelized maple neck, a Goto bridge, Lumen Lays, Seymour Duncan pickups, great build quality, and it's shell pink. But there's more to it than that. There's something special about this guitar. When you go through literally a new guitar every week, things can get kind of samey. I'll put it this way, it's very rare a guitar comes in here that I just do not want to send back, especially one that's not a single cut. Like if you're new around here, you might not realize how high praise this is, considering this Charvel is not a Les Paul. I've played some nice super strats, but I've never really been tempted to own one until now. I love the hell out of this guitar. I was thinking about it and physically there isn't anything I'd really change. I'm not sure if I'm completely sold on the TH10 bridge with how bright it is. I can see it might be a little finicky with certain rigs and maybe some dome knobs would look a little higher end. I mean, these look and feel like the same knob on my Squire Hello Kitty. But other than that, hats off to Charvel. They knocked it out of the park with this one, and it's definitely worth checking out. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. These are of course just my opinions and I'd love to hear yours, so feel free to tell me how wrong I am in the comments. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. If you want to support what I do and get exclusive perks, you can check out my Patreon. Thanks to Sam Ash for making this guitar available, and to Luke for mixing everything. Social media and merch links are down below. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.